I'm so excited to be here. Well, actually I'm not. I mean, I'm excited, but I'm mostly nervous and I'm scared to mess up. I mean, maybe I just did. But how come it's so easy for me to lie to you? And how come we're often incentivized to lie to each other? I think one problem is that talk is cheap. Incidentally, it's also a type of lies and cheap data that we train our current artificial intelligence on, namely large language models. This is also why we say that actions speak louder than words. But if that's true, what does that mean for our current AI that relies so much on words from the internet? At the end of this talk, you will understand that that is a dangerous path and that we need to train AI on real world human actions to reach the next level of AI and artificial general intelligence, AGI. Let me give you a few examples of how actions reveal truths that are words of the mask or distort. Did you know that the time you spend in the restroom predicts better when you quit your job than your estimations? That your grocery basket predicts better who you vote for than your own social media or Instagram posts? That what you say you'll spend your money on predicts very poorly how you end up spending your money? And there's almost a linear correlation between the amount of money you spend on an item and that item's predictiveness of future actions. But before we get into actions, let's talk about the biggest hype in AI today, large language models. So how do large language models understand language? Well, they take a lot of text from the internet, they lay it out in a sequence, and train themselves to predict the next word based on previous words. But we can do something similar for behavior. We can track my actions in the real world over time, sort them chronologically, and train an AI model to predict the next action based on previous actions. And this way, learn the language of behavior. However, the intelligence and the source of truth will be different. LMs have problems with reliability and hallucination. But I claim that if you train models on real world actions, they become more robust and reliable. Another pressing issue for LMs, they're running out of internet data to train on. But most of the data that we create is not online. In fact, in retail and transactions alone, there's a thousand times more data than there is text data on the internet. Of course, this warrants a large discussion around data privacy and ownership. But a lot of times, behavioral data is less personal and sensitive than the private, confidential, and copyrighted data that we train LMs on right now. So I've been obsessing about behavior and behavioral intelligence for the last six years. And it's definitely a spectrum of how predictive data is. If you look at the most noisy data, that's what people say they want and will do, which predicts very poorly how they end up behaving. But if you look at how people invest their time, and especially their money, it becomes more predictive. You know, the internet exists largely in this space of what we say we want and will do. It's a think and talk space that's a loose interpretation of the real world of actions. So when we train large language models in this space, the inherent flaws of reliability, hallucination, wishful thinking, bias. So what we do instead is we train large behavioral models directly in the real world of actions, which makes them more robust and more predictive. Trust, to address all of these insights, we have built a behavior-to-behavior -behavior AI foundation model and train it over one trillion real world human actions. It cost over $5 million to train, and it's now out competing LMs as the model of choice for behavior driven businesses and areas. We call it Behavior GPT, and it has the same depth of intelligence that an LM does, but for behavior. And for all the reasons that I've mentioned, LMs are not revolutionizing behavior driven areas and businesses. Take a retailer, for example. The core of retail is not text-based intelligence from the internet. The core of retail is consumption and transaction, and that's behavior. So in a sense, behavior GPT is a chat GPT moment for behavioral intelligence. 
So what are some implications of behavior intelligence? Well, let's take the intelligence of products. If you ask an LM, it will understand similarity and relatedness of products based on features and descriptions. It will tell you that lactose-free milk and regular milk are similar and close together and related because they have similar features. But if you instead look at the behavioral dimension and how people act on these products, you will see that they are in fact far apart because they are not bought together. Instead, lactose-free milk might be closer to gluten-free bread than it is to regular milk. And only one of these intelligences actually gives users what they want. Here we have uh, two different AI models that are used to retrieve similar motives for a Clint Eastwood wallpaper or poster. Which one do you think actually corresponds to real user behavior? So we have one that's an LM. It recommends black and white posters from old movies, and they all happen to be from romantic movies. It's reasonable, but it's also incorrect. Because if you look at how people actually act on these products and their behavior, you see that people are not looking for just black and white posters from old movies. They're looking for masculine movie stars from the same era. Again, both are reasonable, they're very different, and only one drives conversion. I mean, the LM is, version is basically like grandparents trying to predict what their teenage grandson wants for the room, and the behavior is what he ends up buying. And at some point, I have to accept that what's reasonable to a teenager won't seem reasonable to almost anyone else. <laughs> In any context, ask yourself who and what should define meaning, words, or actions. The biggest focus for LLMs right now is to try to get them to reason and use tools as agents. This basically means that we encourage LLMs to talk to themselves and form chains of thoughts through text. So if you ask an LLM, for example, to help me get a birthday gift for my wife, it will try to solve this step by step. It will start by, what might a married woman want? Maybe jewelry and handbags, and so on. But all it's really doing is speculating and conjecturing on actions it hasn't been trained on. It might give a plausible story, but it's often wrong. I mean, we all know how important it is to actually put ourselves in the shoes of our partner to get good outcomes. I asked ChatGPT to help me get a birthday gift for my girlfriend, and it recommended a gift card as a flexible option, which I thought sounded reasonable. But when I gave it to my girlfriend, she said, don't you know me well enough by now to actually give me something specific? <laughs> and she's right, and I, I will not take that shortcut again. <laughs> Instead, we've trained Baby GPT to put itself in the shoes of another person, because it's been trained to simulate real-world actions and outcomes. It captures richer information, like maybe your wife would really appreciate getting her favorite coffee from her favorite coffee shop, in addition to her gift. So LLMs can use tools like Google, to explore and click around on the internet, but it cannot simulate such actions directly. But of course you can, and your brain can simulate a variety of actions. Imagine that the internet was the only way for you to simulate reality. I wonder what conclusions you would come to, and that's quite scary. Instead, we train Behavior GPT to directly and efficiently end-to-end -end simulate real-world actions. Behavior GPT is already serving millions of users every day. It increases conversion with 20% using 12 times fewer people. But it also enables us to build completely new products and businesses that were impossible before. In fact, it's been so successful that it's no longer being benchmarked against search recommendation engines. It's being benchmarked against LMs and agents, but they still don't stand a chance even though they have billions of dollars in budget. So what do you think? What data is the best source of truth? Is it the polished Instagram post or the unpolished reality that we actually live in? Yes, the real world is ugly and humans do terrible things, but it's the truth. And if you want AI to help us and make us better, it needs to know the true story. 
it cannot just understand the filtered fictions we put online. It needs to understand the unfiltered reality that makes us who we are. It also needs to see the everyday heroes who don't get recognition, how we care for our loved ones, and how we do all those boring tasks for them that never go online. Any intelligence that doesn't understand that will never truly understand us. Thank you.